So I'm going to jump right into this this morning. Uh, a good friend of mine that I grew up hunting and fishing with passed away yesterday because of a parasitic infection called toxoplasmosis. I don't know that y'all have ever heard of that before. I had not until he got sick, but he got the infection from what they could tell from eating undercooked wild hog meat. Now, what I did not know is that toxoplasmosis is also found in venison. I was under the impression that there weren't any foodborne illnesses connected with uh, venison, aside from maybe cross-contamination with E. coli, stuff like that. But that is not the case. Toxoplasmosis is not a bacteria. It is a parasite. And that parasite lives inside the animal, inside the muscle tissue. You can get toxoplasmosis from eating undercooked venison, which kind of freaked me out just a little bit. I've done a lot of research since yesterday. Once I kind of learned about what what had happened to my buddy and what caused everything to escalate, but there is no cure for toxoplasmosis. You cannot kill the parasite. You, there, there is not a way to get it out of your body. There are medications that can help treat it. In some people, uh, there are no symptoms. You can be infected with it and never even know it. While as in other people, it, uh, it involves a whole lot more, it gets a hold of your body. Uh, what happened to my buddy, he was, this, like I said, was years ago, but he was starting to get dizzy, starting to fall down, having dizzy spells. They thought that it was a brain tumor. He went into the hospital, had some scans done. They found a mass on his brain. And I don't know that they went in to do the surgery or if they did more tests or biopsy, but it came back, they had found toxoplasmosis. And it, that parasite had gotten into his brain. So they did more, more testing, found it in his both of his lungs, and uh, immediately he had to have brain surgery. He had one of his lungs completely removed because it was so full of parasites. Had a piece of his other lung removed at the time too. And uh, man, he was he was wheelchair bound for a long time. And guys, this this is this is not something to take lightly. The man had trouble talking, couldn't hardly walk, had a lot of trouble getting around for all of those years because of what it had done to his brain. And after all of those years of, of not really being in, I guess, I guess you could call it remission, where, you know, he, he wasn't seeing any unimprovement <clears throat> after the fact. Back several, I know back in October, several months ago, they had found out he, he had started to get dizzy again, was having trouble walking, and uh, went back to the doctor and they had found out that it had once again gotten into his brain and he was going to have to have surgery again. And uh, through all of that, all the treatment and all the, you know, the hospital stay and all that, ended up finally getting the best of him. And uh, he didn't make it. But that was all from a parasite. And y'all, this lives in deer meat. So all I've eaten a lot of raw deer meat in my day. Raw or almost raw, rare, you know. And uh, I'll be honest with you, not gonna be doing that anymore. Now, you can cook deer meat to about 100, from what I read, about 140, 145 degree internal temperature, and it will kill toxoplasmosis. So you're still looking at a, at a medium rare, uh, you know, backstrap, for instance. So it, it does not have to be overcooked to be able to get rid of the parasite, to be able to kill the parasites. I will definitely be using a meat thermometer, similar to what I do when I'm cooking pork, and uh, I will be checking that meat thermometer for that temperature because, you know, what that man went through, and I mean, he wasn't very old. He was only just a couple years older than me. And what he went through for so many years, just on account of undercooked wild game, like it, it would not be worth it to me uh, for the difference in, you know, five, 10 degrees of cooking temperature. And, uh, you know, there's risk involved eating raw oysters, eating, eating rare meat. I mean, there's always risk involved. And for most people, they would never have any kind of symptoms and it would never affect them. It's a very rare thing. But I did feel like it was very important for me to let all of y'all know uh, what happened to him just because it is rare and most people have never even heard of it and would not know to try to prevent it. As far as freezing the meat, uh, I read several studies that said you could freeze 
deer meat for about two days at whatever negative 10 degrees or, or whatever it was and it would kill it. But I've read other studies that said that even after 14 days of being frozen, that the toxoplasmosis was still alive. So I'm gonna err on the side of it's still gonna be alive if it's frozen. <laughs> yes, but as far as cooking, you should be able to cook it and kill it, similar to E. coli or trichinosis. And y'all don't get me wrong, I'm not trying to scare y'all half to death or anything, but this is something that, that I only knew about because one of my good friends was sick. And I did not until yesterday know that it was in venison. I, I thought he had gotten it from a pig and that's just something else that lives in pigs like trichinosis, which is also a parasite. But no, uh, after doing all that research last night, after his passing, I just, I wanted to be informed as to, you know, how to prevent it. But what I found was even a little bit more unnerving than what I assumed with it being in deer. If you go to read about it online, there was back in 2017, a group of Canadian deer hunters that came down to hunt, I believe it was Illinois. And all, almost all of them, I think there was, I don't remember how many, 10 or 12, something like that. I think eight or nine of them got sick from toxoplasmosis. They all ate medium rare, they ate raw heart you know, something that's kind of a tradition thing. It's like you kill the first deer or whatever you eat, take a bite of the heart. It's kind of like catching tuna, first tuna, take a bite of the heart, you know, raw. Some of them had eaten some raw heart. Some of them had only eaten medium rare, or, or I'm sorry, rare deer meat. And a bunch of them got sick. And it was, they tested positive for toxoplasmosis. I don't even remember the outcome of all that. I don't have the article here in front of me. You can read that for yourself. I don't want to quote anything that's wrong. A lot of them got very, very sick, but it was from eating deer meat. There again, guys, I'm not trying to scare anybody half to death. This is just, he was a good friend of mine uh, back in the day. I hadn't talked to him in a lot of years, but when I was younger, we shared camp together several times and, and hunted together some, and uh, he was a really good guy. He was one of those people that everybody liked. And, you know, maybe if, if they had known any better, maybe none of this had ever happened. Hindsight's always twenty twenty. But to me, I mean, it's kind of one of those information is power kind of things. I just, I've got a platform and I'm going to tell y'all about it. Because if y'all are sitting around eating a whole bunch of half raw uh, venison, thinking that it's perfectly safe, it is not. So please be careful. And uh, anyway, that's all I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to end right there.